You are watching a clip from the John Perry channel, Genetics and Evolution. I don't think I'm alone in this. A lot of us have been sitting around more since COVID started. <laughs> and now things are starting to open up. We're all getting out and doing things. I'm in Quebec. I'm in Canada. And for a while, we weren't even supposed to go outside except for within certain hours of the day. Um, mm -hmm. And then... I have dogs and there was an exception for anyone with dogs. You can, you can be with your dog taking on, on a walk. <laughs> it was that sort of extreme lockdown only happened for a little bit. And then people realized that's, that's kind of crazy. People need to go outside and get fresh air. But honestly, I stopped going outside nearly as much as I used to. I just kind of got into this lazy habit and now I'm going out and doing stuff. Do I need to be careful when I'm running around <laughs> Like, could I now break a bone easier than before? Do you, does atrophy happen <laughs> uh, that quickly? Uh, atrophy can happen that quickly, but you're a young guy and you probably don't have to worry about it to that point. Yeah. If it was um, like an 80 year old woman who's been like, I'm going to go and start jogging tomorrow. Like I'd be like, and eh, chill out grandma. Like just take it slow at the beginning, and <laughs> you know, and yeah. give your bones a chance to catch up. Uh, I think you don't really actually have anything to worry about, but that is a good point because I mean, myself included, I've been sitting on, you know, sitting a whole lot more. I've been inside the whole time. Um, while I'm in Germany right now, um, or before at the beginning of the lockdown, we had pretty much the same thing, but they gave us an hour of outside time, not actually enforceable, obviously, but they, <laughs> they basically said the same thing. You know, everyone's allowed an hour, but you have to be masked and you have to be this and you have to be that. And, and in the end, you know, I fell into a rut where I didn't move much either. I know that remodeling of bones is happening constantly. There was, uh, there was an interview with uh, Chris Hadfield, who's the mm -hmm. astronaut, the Canadian astronaut. He was saying that the first week that you're in space, you just pee out calcium because mm -hmm. your bones are trying to remodel. They're, they don't know what's happening in the zero gravity. So being inside long periods of time and not doing much and being quite sedentary uh, has actually two, two dangers. Um, and it inf impacts your bones in two ways. First, you're actually not getting enough vitamin D because yeah. you're, in, you're inside, which is horrible for your mood. It causes all kinds, it's been linked to depression and all that kind of stuff, but it's also been super linked to your bone not knowing how to metabolize your calcium. So say you're getting enough calcium. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It doesn't matter yeah. if you don't have the metabolically active version of vitamin D, which mm -hmm. means... Any calcium you're taking in, you are peeing right out and good luck. Yeah. Like it, it won't actually, it won't actually help you. So that's the first and horrible, you know, impact to our bones uh, from staying inside. Then the second thing is that, yeah, your muscles are not acting on your bones. They're not giving you that pressure. They're not telling your bones, hey, I'm being used. Please keep remodeling this area as you were. Our skeleton is always trying to optimize itself. It yeah. takes away from areas that aren't being used and adds to areas that are being used. So mm -hmm. if you're not using your legs all the time or your arms or, you know, you're not exercising, it's not great for your skeleton. Your skeleton's like, oh, okay, I heard you really don't need this stuff. Let's, let's lighten the load. The, our, our femora, like the, the top of the femur where it hits or inserts into the hip, mm -hmm. it has all these struts that are optimized for our type of walking and mm -hmm. it distributes the the pressure well from you know hitting into the hip and also back into the femur so you know so you don't snap off your uh, femoral head which is a really bad injury yeah. so it's it's a yeah so it's a good way to distribute that. so we have all these struts too and they've shown that yeah okay the struts in runners look different than the struts in you know your average joe that just maybe walks to work so we look different on the inside, depending on what we're doing. And those definitely remodel <laughs> over our lifetime. So That's so neat. The skeleton sort of acts like an intelligent system, right? It's, it's, it's finding Absolutely. ways to optimize itself. Yeah. Is this all, do we understand, I mean, I guess we don't understand all of the rules that are happening, but this, this must just be happening as individual cells are communicating with each other and just obeying fairly simple rules, like if then statements, essentially, if you want Basically. to think about it, like programming. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. How many mysteries are there? Do you think that we still just don't understand or has, oh, has so that many. communication system been well understood? Like, do we know the if then statements? 
Um, to, to a pretty big extent, yes, in some ways, because we have a lot of drugs that act on these if-then statements. Basically, like, if, rank, if hormone rankle is present, uh, osteoblast is deactivated. If osteoblast mm -hmm. is deactivated, it turns off its, like, system. It, it's basically like coding. It's exactly like biological coding, right? Mm -hmm. So when one cell turns off its system, it changes its keys, and it can no longer be activated. It can only be activated when you turn on a different key. And that kind of stuff has actually been mapped out relatively well in humans. Yeah, because of the way we want drugs to act, we want to understand how our kidneys function, our bones and our skeletons actually super intertwined with our kidneys, our liver, our adrenal system. Um, and recently there was a paper that came out, I think it was last year, that showed that the, um, the skeleton is involved in your fight or flight response which I thought really? was super cool. Yeah. Yeah. So because our skeleton is tied in with how our kidneys work and other hormones are actually produced in the skeleton, uh, apparently one of those is, uh, re is responsible for your like flight response, which I thought was super cool. Yeah. Wow. So there's a lot of stuff that's still to be discovered like this, which was just discovered last year or well, was just published last year. And then other things that are pretty well known, like our remodeling cycle is pretty well known. We know how to kind of try to slow it down so that people, you know, will uh, increase estrogen in older women and that helps slow down the over remodeling. Mm -hmm. So that only happened because we actually understand that system quite well. Well, that's it for this clip, but don't worry. I post clips regularly and every Thursday I post completely fresh content. Make sure you're subscribed. Liking and commenting is also welcome.